old school sex ed fucked us up. So how do we go from fucked up to fuckable? Today, I am here with the incredible Sashir Zameda. You love her from Saturday Night Live, the current ABC sitcom Home Economics, the show Woke on Hulu, and hilarious shenanigans on her Best Friends podcast. Hi, Sashir. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I heard that you have a comedy special coming out soon. Yes, yes. I'm very excited. This is my second stand-up special, and it comes out... August 15th on the 800 pound gorilla website and then August 29th on YouTube and it's the first special I've produced and I'm very proud of it and excited for people to see more stuff from me. I'm excited for you and it's called the first woman. Yes. Yeah. What is it like to be the first woman? (laughs) Well, I'm not the first one, but (laughs) I think once you watch the special, you'll understand more as to why I named it that way, but there's some history in there. There's a lot about women and women's bodies and women's health and me as a woman. And yeah, I think, I think people will definitely get it once they watch it. Yes. I feel like there's a lot of lulls, like LOLs moments, but also some pretty touching parts. So the first segment of my show is called, would you rather, would you rather have multiple spontaneous orgasms while having dinner with your parents or have period sex with Pete Davidson. This is strange because I also know Pete. So I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would take the family dinner and have a lot of bathroom breaks or <laughs> like excuse myself or, or just get really excited about the food. Like, oh, oh wow, these potatoes are hurt are orgasmic my god (laughs) orgasmic potatoes oh (laughs) do your parents cook did you like did you grow up in a family where like people cook or is it like takeouts i grew up on takeouts i also grew up on takeout and like box tv dinners tv dinners is such an american thing it really is it's training you to eat in front of the tv (laughs) (laughs) exactly and i'm from thailand so there's so many street food places and you never need box foods oh i mean that's nice yeah it would be go out grab something come back and you watch tv still like it's still tv dinner but it's never you know frozen food yeah i mean that's i'm sure it's healthier it's like a little fresher than something frozen and then heating it up yeah i mean i can't lie i like one of those uh what is it called um where like there's peanut butter and jelly inside oh an uncrustable yeah <laughs> those are legit my favorite i that's like my fa- favorite set food they're always like on set in, in <gasps> different crafty departments and i'll like snag a bunch and take them home and then at, at one point i was shooting in in georgia and i just bought a huge box of frozen crustables and i'm sure there there's additives and stuff that aren't good for you but they're i was like for you. no but it was like a nice treat i love <laughs> I really do enjoy them because it maybe it takes me up back to childhood, like yeah, post like swim practice or something. It just feels very like satisfying. Oh, and I heard that you are uh, that your household is a no shoes household that you take your shoes yes. off before you get into your house. Yeah, because you're gonna bring all of outside into your home if you just like walk around with your shoes on. And I, I had a a guy I was dating he didn't understand this because <laughs> not everyone's raised that way and I get it. Um, but I like to keep the shoes at the door. And one day he thought he was being helpful and we were about to leave the apartment and he had his shoes on and he was standing on the rug and he's like, look, I have my shoes on, but it's okay. Cause I'm on the rug. And I was like, did he think the floor was lava? Like what? I don't understand. <laughs> Why did he think the rug was safe? That's actually worse. Now you're getting your dirt dug into the fabric. I don't need that. Because now all the dirt's trapped in there. Yeah. With the wood floors, you can like mop it up. Yes, exactly. I'd rather be be on the wood floors. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very funny when other people really don't understand the concept. You know what really gives me the ick is people who wear shoes inside their homes full of carpets mm. and then they want to have sex with you on the floor. Oh, God. No. Now we're just basically outside. 
Like, <laughs> like, are we having sex in the middle of Times Square? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are actually. You actually are. I'm like, I'm not down for this. I'm from an Asian mm-hmm. household. It was clean as fuck where I grew up. <laughs> like my mm-hmm. mom like sanitizes everywhere all the time. Yeah, of course. And and like that's how it should be. You want to I want to live in a very clean space and yeah, who knows? Floor sex could happen at any point in time and you don't want to feel unprepared. <laughs> True. Or at have risk. You had, <laughs> have you ever had sex with your shoes on? Well, I've been fingered in public spaces <laughs> before and I Same. did have shoes and like all my other clothes on. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> what do you think about people who wear shoes in bed? I think that's crazy. Why would <laughs> shoes even be, be near the bed? That doesn't seem socks get a pass because my feet are always cold. I understand that, but shoes, where are you going? Like, are you in a rush? Like, what? no, don't wear, don't bring your shoes in the bed. <laughs> Some people wear shoes in bed and wear shoes while they have sex in bed. Oh no, 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 no. Maybe if like I don't know, there's a position where someone's standing on the side of the bed and they need to like have traction so they don't slide maybe i could see that but maybe don't don't get in the bed with the shoes i i would suggest not so bed sex no shoe standing sex maybe for traction yes yeah if it's like a support thing if you don't want to slide it's true it's true um i was uh i was thinking about how when i was younger and people always talk about like, oh my God, like, you know, all these sex positions. And this was me, like I was 16. I'm like, I don't know what any of these sex positions are. And where mm-hmm. did you learn all of these sex positions from? And of course, the boys in school learned the sex positions from porn, from, from porn. Yes, from porn. And Precisely. I would say most people, I would, I would say up until now, because we're starting to have some kind of comprehensive sex ed in mm-hmm. some schools very few oh, very few um so still the majority have had pretty crazy sex ed some are very fear based some are religion based not science based and some are just none like some people have not no sex ed mm-hmm. uh, up till i was 15 i went to an all girls catholic school so yeah. no sex ed mm-hmm. at all Damn. uh and you talked about sex ed. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. I think it's like sad that we don't tell young girls or young women that it's okay to learn about your body, to touch your body, to like talk about your body. We make it so secretive and a mystery to everyone. <laughs> and uh, and then I've talked to women who are my age who have never seen their vagina or touched it or explored it and and they'll let other people do it they'll, they'll, their doctor will do it yeah. or their boyfriend or husband will do it but they they won't because it's like forbidden or like like uncharted territory and uh yeah i think it's just like better to get an understanding not even just for sexual ple- pleasure but just for like health purposes even just to know like what does it look like down there on a regular basis so when something's different you know what to look for <laughs> you know what to say <laughs> to your doctor where it's like oh actually it's doing something different now so maybe we should look at that it should be required for people to know what's going on with their body what are some sex at scare tactics that you've heard uh well when i was younger in middle school we just got a slideshow of <laughs> of slide shows my favorite <laughs> <laughs> just a slideshow of like diseases like this is what gonorrhea looks like this is uh syphilis like they just like showed us like horror photos to scare you so they always show like the worst case ever existed it's never like the beginning of it it's like someone has like some like cauliflower coming out of their asshole or something (laughs) (laughs) and you're like well i guess i'll never have sex (laughs) yeah i'm sure we also had um this little baby machine it was called a baby think about it or something like that and yeah it was like a doll it was a baby doll and it had a little computer inside of its body and it would track how many times you held it how many times you fed it 
and it had like a light sensor like in its mouth so you could it could tell like when you put a bottle to its mouth and had a light sensor I guess in its crotch so you could tell how many times you changed it and you'd get graded by the end of the week to see like how well you took care of this baby which oh, also sucked God. because we were still going to school so I who didn't wasn't having sex and did not want a baby <laughs> I was like I don't want this baby I don't want this responsibility I didn't ask for this life and I fuck failed this baby. I did a fuck, this <laughs> fuck this baby I didn't ask for this <laughs> and so I did a terrible job taking care of this baby because I was oh. trying to concentrate on my other studies and then cps i'm sure some intern at cps yeah. a child protective <laughs> services like pulled me aside in it at school and they're like look if this was a real child we'd have to take it away from you and i was like good i didn't want this <laughs> <laughs> i didn't ask for this take it <laughs> how dare you focusing on math when you could be taking care of this baby yeah i guess they were trying to show us how hard it is but i was like I, You're like, I know it's hard. I don't want this. Yeah, don't worry. I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had the wear the condom on a banana for your sex ed? I actually don't think so. I really don't remember that part of sex ed. I feel like it was just like, yeah, scare tactics. There was never like actual instructions on how to protect yourself when having sex. It was like, don't do it or you'll have a baby and it'll be really hard. <laughs> or you'll get an STD and it'll be awful. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. And that's so harmful. Like it, it is funny, it's really funny. <laughs> but it's also really harmful because being the person that I am talking about sex every day, I get questions every day from my followers and from my listeners. And it's like funny, but really sad when I get a question from a girl that's like 18 or 17 or 16, that's like, I started touching myself and now I feel really, really bad doesn't mean mm. I'm not a virgin anymore. You, It's okay. Like, first off, still... who cares? <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, I mean, virginity itself is like a whole social construct just to like control women as well. Like, yeah. why and... does that even matter? Like the idea that you can like have this thing stripped away from you and then you're different. It's yeah. it's another version of control. I, in my show, in my uh, the stand-up special that's coming out, I talk about masturbating and I share a story about how the first time I masturbated was with the handle of a lint roller, which wasn't great. <laughs> Trying you. to use the resources around me. <laughs> and, and then I open it up and ask the audience what they used. And I, I did this on the road and it was so fun because it was nice to have people just like shout out things that they used and you know, you get answers like uh cucumber uh sharpie like whatever you know like, people are just like doing scavenger <laughs> hunts in their house <laughs> trying to find things that fit and and then the more people open up about it the more you realize oh everyone did this like it's so normal because we're curious beings and we have sexual desires so of course many of us have done things like that but it's it's rare for us to say that out loud it's like it's rare for, for people who probably aren't straight men to say it out loud because there's so many things in media that encourages straight male sexual well, American pie. Yeah, literally, literally. There's a whole movie franchise based <laughs> on a boy fucking a pie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's, a, that's the American way. Yeah, that's like... <laughs> Try well, you, putting the pie no. inside my vagina now. That's not okay. No, it'll burn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you do that on your shows, like when you're on the road, what's like one of the most shocking things that women have put in their vaginas? People have used like electric toothbrushes, which is great because, you know, it vibrates. It vibrates. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That woman's smart. I wasn't even <laughs> sure. I try putting a, a remote control in my inside my vagina, but then I realized like I needed something more round. But like yeah. the remote control was weird angle. Yeah, I would imagine the buttons would also be an interesting sensation. <laughs> yeah, but then yeah, and then I try to like squeeze to see if yeah. it's this channel. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it worked. <laughs> it's a it's a new new version of Netflix and chill. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Although I didn't have Netflix when I when I was growing up, I had dial up mm. internet. So yeah. <laughs> so what I have, I'm curious. What is one sex story, either yours or an unnamed friend, that you think could go into the Hall of Fame of sex stories? I 
wanted to have sex with a guy and thought we were going to. We were like getting wasted at a bar and he was like trying to be very chivalrous, but like I was like, I was already DTF. I was like, no need, but, <laughs> but he was like, I should walk you home. And I was like, oh my God, yes, walk me home. <laughs> like, like just playing along. Yeah. And then, you know, we get to my apartment and he's like, oh, I should walk you upstairs. And I was like, yes, walk me upstairs, <laughs> let's go. And then we get to the living room and we're talking for a long time. And he goes, oh my God, wow. It's like getting so late. I should probably stay here for the night. And I'm like, oh my God, yes, that's what I wanted. And he's like, on the couch, right? And I was like, uh, sure, I guess. And so then we're like putting sheets on the couch and making the couch. And then he's like, oh, you know what I just realized? If your roommates come home and see me on the couch, they're gonna be scared. So I should probably sleep in your bed, right? And I'm like, yeah, man, like we are on the same page. <laughs> yeah, go. you have wasted so much of my time get in the bed and then we get in the bed try to fool around he's wasted so like he can't get it up Whiskey and day. yeah it's what happens and he was like oh whoops too many margs and i was like okay that's fine we'll try again in the morning and we wake up in the morning and i try and i'm like hey what's going on and he goes oh i have to go to work and it took me a while to realize that like he lived in harlem uh -huh. And he worked in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, where I was living. And I was like, oh, he just needed a place to stay. Oh, no, you were Airbnb. I literally. <laughs> and I got nothing for it. I didn't get paid. I didn't get food. I didn't get sex. I didn't get nothing. Oh, uh, and also I got scammed. He said Marks. I'm not yeah, down. Marks. I'm not down to fuck. <laughs> I know. I should have been like, oh, Marks. get out immediately. You called a margarita <laughs> Marg. Oh, my God. Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> a few marks. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Pussy mm -hmm. dry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, with when it comes to sexual exploration, would you say you're pretty explorative, or would you say you're pretty like conventional? I think explorative. Like I'm down to try anything and see how I like it. I'm utilize sure like, different holes. Yeah, utilize different holes, different. <laughs> spaces i'm down to like see what feels good who yeah. do you think who do you think would have the best pillow talk after mm -hmm. sex and why jeff bezos taylor swift or barack obama hmm. pillow talk award goes to maybe barack obama because i'd imagine he's seen some like real wild stuff as the president yeah, he's like so, aliens yeah. are real. You have totally, also yeah. So maybe yeah, like documents. after like a sexual release, <laughs> after he's nice and like loosened up, have some loose lips too, and tell me some government secrets that he that we don't know about. Um. Also, the 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 suaveness, like the tone. Yeah. Like, oh, that's also the voice I definitely want to hear after sex, during sex, before sex. That's a good voice. <laughs> Yes, I also feel like Taylor Swift it, pillow talk might be really good at like serenading me to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the song that she just wrote about our sexual encounter. Yeah, although that might make me feel real self conscious. I'd be like, I don't want to talk about this now. <laughs> we just did it. <laughs> <laughs> like we just did it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, back to December. <laughs> Um, I heard you're a fan of pole dancing. I am. Yeah. I mean, uh, a, a practitioner patron of a practitioner. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I love watching strippers and, and pole dancers. I think it's like such a skill and such an athletic ability. And I also like doing it myself. Um, my best friend, Nicole Byer loves pole dancing and got me into it like a little before the pandemic and it's really fun and you're like using muscles that you don't usually use on a regular basis and it makes me feel so strong it's like Ooh. once you once once i started climbing the pole i was like oh my god like it's like a, such an obvious improvement of my body i'm like i, I was at a point where i couldn't even <laughs> hold my own body weight now i can climb and oh it's, my gosh it's really cool yeah so how can pole dancing improve my sex life 
I mean, I think it makes you feel like in control and powerful and like, like you're owning your own sexuality and you can use it however you want. You can be as sexy or dirty or sweet or nasty as you want. And that makes yourself feel like sexy and anyone who's watching will automatically feel, think that you're sexy because you do. Oh, yes. It, it exudes. Shines yeah. Through. yeah. I've never tried pole dancing. I mean, you should. It's fun. Clubs and I admire the athleticism so much. I just I feel like it's like a lot of core work, isn't it? It's a lot of core work. It's mostly your legs, to be honest. It's like a lot of like gripping the pole with your knees and like like trying to propel yourself upward or spinning and like hooking. But and so you'll leave with like bruises all up and down your legs and people will be like, what did you do to yourself? But but it's it's like football. battle scars. Yeah. Like, but yeah, soccer. I don't know. I'm not sure where, where else you get bruises like on your inner thighs and your legs and your shins, but you will be bruised up. But then eventually you get used to it and your body adapts, which is oh, very cool. You know where you get bruises in your inner, th inner thighs? Where? It's sex parties. I would imagine. <laughs> Uh, I'm so excited for everyone to watch The First Woman, your new special. Tell me why it's so important for you to talk about period, uh, sex, even sexual assault in a way that yeah. is digestible in your special. I like to talk about those things because I think it's rare for people to hear someone talk about it from a personal standpoint. And I think the more... I talk about it, the more other people talk about it and talk about their experiences, the more people can relate and feel seen and feel comfortable talking about it in their own lives. And we're in a time where a lot of rights for women's health are being stripped away. And uh, I think it's very, very important for people to feel like seen and, and feel like their bodies are worthy of attention. and that the things that we're thinking are very normal and normalize uh, talking about this publicly. And I hope people can relate to it. I hope it motivates some conversation in their own lives. And I hope people also laugh and enjoy it. Yes, yes. And I fully support you because I think the best way to enter that conversation that's so hard and so taboo is really through humor. Yeah, yeah. I feel like comedy breaks down people's defenses. People are more likely to listen when they laugh and then somehow, oh, I guess I learned something that you like, you don't yeah. expect it. But when you're laughing and then you see people laughing at the same thing, it feels like we're all kind of connecting on this thing that you may have been scared to talk about in the first place. It's so interesting to me to see like com comedians talking about the heaviest shit, but yeah. like, use comedy and so everyone kind of laugh and then they kind of feel bad they're laughing at the same time but they're laughing and it's just this cool shared experience yeah well I think people like you know life can be heavy sometimes and so the comedian's job is kind of to analyze what's happening in our lives and culture and society and then once you are like add truth to it people can't help but like laugh and relate to it because they are going through the same thing yes oh for sure the last segment of my show is called five quickies with dr tara okay and i'm gonna give you a sentence you're gonna give me a response back okay got it ready ready okay number one having sex on your period uh great <laughs> acceptable uh normal <laughs> And also we get horny on our period. So why not? <laughs> I do. I do too. Mm -hmm. My husband's uh, not a huge fan, but definitely plays. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> Number two, eating whipped cream and sprinkles off your partner's nipples. Ooh, very fun in the moment. Will be very sticky after. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, the devil wears Prada role play. Your Meryl Streep. And Megan Thee Stallion is your assistant, Andy. <laughs> I mean, uh, fun power dynamics for sure. Also very interesting to see Megan Thee Stallion in a uh, sub role, I guess. <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect that. 
but I, yeah, I would love to see it. I would be, I'd be there to, to watch it if it's ever somewhere where it's, <laughs> where people can watch. Uh, yes. Number four, gangbang with the cast of Succession. <laughs> I feel like that'd be very intense. I feel like that'd be like, yeah, a lot of anger. A lot of, a lot of like angry sex happening in that room. Oh, a lot of angry sex. One of my friends uh, saw this huge billboard. I think it was on Melrose. And he was like, so we were talking about succession. I'm like, oh man, I love it. Like, it's so, it's so good. And my friend's like, I don't want to watch it. I'm like, why not? I mean, like, it's it's just like stressful. And I'm like, mm. really? Like, but it's, you know, it's fiction. Well, I guess kind of, but it's, it's I'm I like, it's, it's a TV show. And he's like, no, 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 no. I saw that poster, that huge billboard. And just, I'm stressed out by just looking at that billboard. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. Because <laughs> the succession crew is like, you know, yeah. they're always mean business, but also like hurt on the inside and all the trauma. But they're so good at showing it on their faces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen any advertisement where they're smiling. <laughs> I don't think that's oh what the show gosh. is about. Well, the next one um, <laughs> is a repeat, but number five, becoming Pete Davidson's next celebrity girlfriend. Um, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good on that. Um, it could boost my celebrity. I don't know. But, you know, he, he's great as a friend. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Not interested as a romantic partner. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So where can everyone find you? Uh, the first woman special comes out August 15th on 800 pound gorilla website. And then on YouTube on August 29th and my website is sheer.com. My socials are at the sheer truth, T H E sheer S H E E R truth. And that's it. Yeah. Just look out for my stuff. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your, tell everybody, <laughs> tell the people you're fucking. Um, yeah. I'm excited for people to see it. Yes. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And my Love Bites fam, thank you so much for listening. Please like and share to everyone you know. And per usual, have an orgasmic day. Thanks for listening. This was, this was Love Bites. Love Bites. By Dr. Tara. Follow Dr. Tara on social media at lovebites.co. Have an orgasmic day.